Prosper Log. Show date 1 4, 1 2, 1 4. The front of the chair. Uh, so, sorry it's been so long since the last entry. Rough, rough, rough week last week, rough week this week. But I'm going to do the best I can. This week's episode, it, this week's entry, excuse me, is sponsored by Kevin Ayer's Blues and Metal Show. Hosted by my good friend Kevin Sherman, who I work with on Beer and Song of the Day. Kevin, live long and prosper with you. The prosper salute as always. And continue on with what you're, with what you're rocking on. Before I pop the beer, I want to congratulate my upstairs neighbors, Carlos and Sulamar Lugo Lopez, on the recent birth of their child. Congratulations, you two. It's been a while, been here the whole time. Con- congratulations again. The Prosper Salute, you two are going to make awesome parents. You two are going to make very awesome parents. I have no doubt in my mind. All right. That being said, let us pop this week's beverage, shall we? Ooh, this, is, this looks good. I've never had it before. Rogue Hazelnut Brown Nectar. 5.6%. This one is for the road in all of us. From the American Beer Festival. Alright. Proper opening apparatus. Proper technique. A decent pop. A very, very decent pop. I will take it. Right into the prosper consumption apparatus. That's good. Alright, cheers to you all. Kapla! If they say the thing on Empire. Ooh, that's good. That's good. Just kind of imagine if somebody mixed some Nutella with a beer. That is good. Alright. Start right off with the birthdays. You, get, get, gotta, you gotta start off right, you gotta start off with the birthdays. All the way back from the first. Guy I worked with here at Earth Station Okinawa. Tommy Gonzalez. Gonzo, how's it going, brother? How's life treating you? Hope things are going well for you. I saw recently where your wife just became pregnant not too long ago. Congratulations to you two, my friend. The prosperous salute to the both of you. And I drink to the occasion of your birthday. All right. Taking it back to the third, Donna Kehoe. Now... Donna, I haven't met you yet in person. I hope to rectify that one day. But you run... Last count I had, you ran the group Live Long and Prosper on Facebook, which has recently created its own page. Donna, I'm hoping I'm hoping to meet you one day in person. Happy birthday. I drink to you. All right, next on the list. From December 7th, Michael Lobo Schroeder. Schroeder, dude, what's up? How's it going, man? I hear you just recently moved to Yeehaw, Texas, there with my buddy Josh Baker. Look him up. Mike, look him up. Josh, look up, Mike. You guys get together, make, get together, have one, have one on me. The prosperous salute to both of you. And I drink. Next on the list, Kelly Paradise. Kelly, how are you doing? I hope wife's treating you well. I saw recently you just had a baby yourself. Congratulations to you. Happy birthday to you. And I drink. Next up on the list from the 10th. A Masonic brother of mine, Jonathan Bailey. Brother John, how you doing, my friend? I hope life's treating you well. Happy birthday to you. And the Prosper Salute, excuse me. The Prosper Salute, and I drink. Alright, next on the list, also on the 10th, we're going to throw it out to Sandy Pratt. See, this is a gal I know from back home. Sandy, I hope you had a happy birthday. I hope the kids 
I hope the kids went out for went all out for you on your birthday. I hope it was a good one. Sandy, I hope life is treating you well, and I drink to you. Excuse me. All right, next on the list, guy I worked with in jolly old England, good friend of mine. Still talk to him every now and then on the old fart book. Steve-O Red Rocket Richardson. Steve-O bro, how's life treating you? It's all where you got married not too long ago. Saw where things are going good for you. I hope life's treating you well. Excuse me. Steve-O, happy birthday. I'll drink to you, my friend. Also on the 11th. Wendy Chadwell. I haven't met... I have yet to meet Wendy in person, but I... I went to Bible camp a few years ago with her husband, George. Wendy, George, I hope life's treating you too well. Um, hope things are going well for you. Wendy, I hope to meet you someday in person. I really do. I hope George spoiled you. I drink to you on, for, on the occasion of your birthday. All right, on to just yesterday, December 13th. This is a guy that I worked with in jolly old England. I eventually followed to Germany, but I didn't follow him to where he ended up last. Josh Sandifer. Josh, how's life treating you? Hope I hope things are going well for you. I saw where you just recently re retired. My friend, congratulations to you on doing what you did for as long as you did. The prosper salute to you, as always, and I drink to you. And last but not least, definitely last but not least, a wonder, a uh, ex, an awesome leader of men, women, and it's knew him and knew him in good old Germany. I'm talking about you, Sterling Daniels, or old Sandbag, as I used to call you. How's life treating you? I hope life is treating you well. I hope things are going well for you. I really do, and I want to thank you for the influence you had on me back when we were together in Germany. You. You meant a lot to me, sir. I pre I appreciate everything you did for me. The prosperous salute to you. And I drink to you, my friend. Thank you. I can't thank you enough for everything you've done for me. I drink to you. <sighs> Birthdays. Done. I have one additional shout-out to give to James Colley and the cast and crew that work on the Internet series... Star Trek New Voyages slash Phase 2. They recently put out, a, put out a new episode called Mind Sifter. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, please do so. Excuse me. I will try to include a link in the thread for this episode. On both my Prosper page and on my, on my personal page. Jim, my friend, well done. Very well done. Good episode. It was it was a good episode. The prosper salute to you as always. And I'll tell you, this guy thinks he's Elvis, I swear. The prosper salute. And I drink to you, my friend. Alright. Let us move into Trek history, shall we? First in the first in, first entry I have for Trek history. January, or excuse me, December 6th, 1991. I'm going to be bouncing all over the place here, bear with me. December 6th, 1991, Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, premieres in the United States. The, this was the last voyage of the original series crew. This was also the last motion picture to be produced while Gene Roddenberry was alive. He passed away... Gene Roddenberry passed away back in October of 1991, as we all know. And the dedication for the movie reads, For Gene Roddenberry. Good movie, good movie. Good way for good way to send off Captain Kirk and, and company. January 7th, 1979. Star Trek The Motion Picture is released in the United States. Now... The motion picture, some people didn't like it, some people liked it. I thought it was alright. I mean, in my opinion, 
The motion picture only had one objective. The the motion picture only had one job to do was to was to bring back the original series crew from being off the air from not making Star Trek for 10 years unless you count the animated series. But the motion picture had one job. Bring the crew of the Enterprise to the big screen. It did it. Way to go. If it hadn't been for the motion picture, I don't think Star Trek would be... I don't think Star Trek would be around anymore. Even to its current permutation. But, I'm not going to go into that. December 9th. Michael Dorn was born. Happy birthday to you, Mr. Dorn. He played Colonel Worf in the aforementioned Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, who was the grandfather of the main character he played that made him famous, Lieutenant Worf on The Next Generation, Lieutenant Commander Worf on Deep Space Nine, who was, believe it or not, was the only main character from Deep Space Nine to appear after that series ended. Mr. Dorn is 62. He has the most appearances of any main Star Trek actor. Mr. Dorn, you did an excellent job of showing us that yesterday's enemies could be tomorrow's allies, or today's allies. The Prosper salute to you. Happy birthday. I drink. All right, December 11th, 1998. Star Trek Insurrection premieres in the U.S., this one, some people say this one had the feel of, a, of an episode. I kind of agree, but at the same time, I enjoyed it. It was a nice, lighthearted adventure. The, the crew needed it, you know, after the events of First Contact, the next movie. Yeah, needed to be light. It did its job, but at the same time, felt like an episode. I personally think it could have, I personally think, you know, I'll shut up. They get paid to make movies. I don't, so I'll just keep I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. <laughs> December thirteenth, nineteen twenty nine. Christopher Plummer was born. Now, what what did he have to do with Star Trek? You might be asking. Well, he played one of the conspirators to try to derail the peace process between the Federation and the Klingon Empire. General Chang in Star Trek VI: The Undiscovered Country. <laughs> Excuse me. He is 85 on the 13th. Happy birthday to you, sir. And finally, December 13th, 2002, Star Trek Nemesis is released in the United States. Star Trek Nemesis is the reason we have the JJ verse today. Honestly, people people were tired of seeing the Next Generation crew. I think they could have I think they probably could have pumped out one, maybe two more movies. I think the Next Generation crew was good for two more. They certainly left it open. I think it was dumb for them not to try, but like I said earlier, I don't get paid to make movies. So I'm just going to basically shut up and color when it comes to that. Uh-oh. Empty as a brain cell is the average sequest. Right? Time for a top-up, shall we? All right. Gonna pause on the trek for a minute. This week's football picks. All right, for December fourteenth, I have Steelers versus Falcons. I don't know how Atlanta, excuse me, is. I don't know how Atlanta is going to be in the playoffs with a losing record. They're like five and nine. But I'm sorry, I. I think I think you guys are kind of kind of suck this year. I am going with the Steelers. Redskins Giants. Go with the Giants. Got to. Got to. Dolphins Patriots. Now, I think the Dolphins can do it. They did it earlier in the season. I think I think I really do think the Dolphins can beat the Patriots again. Even though the game is in Foxborough, I still think the Dolphins can do it. I, I'm going with the Dolphins on that one. I, this is one of my hunch games. I have a hunch that the Dolphins are going to upset the Patriots again. Raiders Chiefs. Yeah, you guys remember last time. I, I predicted that one wrong. But I'm going with the same prediction. I think, I think, I think, I think it was a fluke that Oakland beat the Chiefs. I really do. I, I, think, I, I really think the Chiefs are going to win this time. 
Texans Colts. Duh. Sorry. Yeah. I'm a diehard Colts fan. I don't I wouldn't say diehard Colts fan. I don't know. I don't know who our 53rd draft pick was back in our fir- back in the fir- very first NFL draft. I don't know who we could have picked and over who we actually picked. I don't know that stuff. But I I am familiar with our wins and losses. We're I'm going with I'm going with Colts always. Always going with Colts. Colts win this one, we clinch. We could even rest our starters if we wanted to. Going with Colts. Jaguars Ravens. <laughs> really? Really? I mean, no. Ravens. I'm going with the Ravens on that one. I think I think the Jaguars are going to keep sucking at life this season. The only, the only thing that Jaguars can do is bring is bring another potential playoff team down. I mean, that's it's it's basically a filler game. It's basically all it is. Packers Bills. Sorry. I I don't see the I don't see the Bills pulling this one off. Buccaneers Panthers. Same thing. Now, I I'm still going with the Panthers even though they don't have Cam Newton. They don't have Cam Newton the rest of the season, as as any of you may or may not know. He was recently involved in an automobile accident, and he had a few fractures in his back. Um, had had surgery to correct him Monday, Tuesday. Released the next day or two later. Don't I, I don't remember the timetable on that one, but they don't have Cam Newton right now for the rest of the season. I still think the Panthers are going to be able to pull it out. Over the Bucks, Bengals Browns, the Ohio Showdown. Go with the Bengals. Go with the Bengals. I uh, honestly, last week the Browns against the Colts. The Browns almost did it. The Browns almost upset the Colts. Honestly, the Colts were lucky to win that one. Um, but I'm still going with the Bengals. I I don't think the Browns can do it. I I may be wrong. I may be wrong. If I'm wrong, so be it. Jets, Titans. Can't both teams lose? This is another one of those filler games. They're both like two and they're both like two and twelve, three and eleven. They're both they both have crappy records. Broncos, Chargers. Go with the Broncos. Broncos need to win. Patriots need to lose. Colts need to win. Broncos win. They Broncos win. They will. They will hold. They will. If the Broncos win, Patriots lose. Broncos will earn that number one seed, which means the Patriots will have to go through Denver in order to get this in order to get to Arizona. Vikings Lions. You know, really, the Vikings are too inconsistent. They win, they win when I expect they win when I don't expect them to, and they lose when I don't expect them to. But not all the time. You know, they're too inconsistent. Actually, both teams are really kind of inconsistent. The Lions not as much as as the Vikings, but I'm going with the Lions on that one. Excuse me, 49ers Seahawks. Can't both teams lose? As much as I don't like them, I'm going with Seahawks. Cowboys Eagles. Cowboys don't stand a chance. For the first time, and I was talking to a buddy of mine today. First time in maybe like five years, the Cowboys have had a winning record. I can't make any more eight and eight jokes, but at the same time, I I honestly I honestly don't see him holding in holding up and going to the playoffs. I honestly see him missing again this year. But I got to go with the Eagles on this one. To beat them once before. I, I see it happening again. Call it a hunch. All righty, Monday Night Football: Saints and Bears. Going with the Saints. Jay Cutler is just going to throw too many interceptions. He's not going to he's not going to make it into his own end zone or into their end zone. Excuse me. Saints all the way on that one. Eighteenth, December eighteenth, Titans Jaguars. I think the tight. I think the Titans have it. I think both. I think both teams are like two and twelve. Don't quote me on that, but I have a feeling that the Titans are going to beat the Jaguars. That is all she wrote for football. Let us go into the historical archive. This week's entry from the archive: the Galileo Seven. The Enterprise is en route to Marcus 3 to deliver medical supplies. However, it, however, the trip to Mar- the trip to Marcus is a three-day trip 
their rendezvous with the freighter do doesn't take place for five days, so they have two days. They The Enterprise is investigating the Morisaki effect. They decide to send a shuttle crewed by First Officer Spock, Chief Engineer Scott, Dr. McCoy, Lieutenants Latimer, Gaetano, Boma, and Yeoman Mears. Basically, the sh what happens is the shuttle flies into the cloud and gets and gets and loses and they lose control of it. Crashes on a planet and they have to fight for survival while at the same time trying to repair the shuttle to get back in to get back to the ship. The Enterprise set the Enterprise arrives in orbit of that planet and manages to find a way to send transport down landing parties after having already launched another shuttle. After after the second day, the Enterprise is ordered to recall its search parties, set course for and set course for Machus 3. However, at the last minute, Spock is able to launch the shuttle and shoot up and basically shoot off a flare, get the Enterprise's attention, and beam the and beam the other survivors onto the Enterprise as the shuttle deteriorates. Let's go behind the scenes. A staff rewrite of this episode's script was completed on 1 December 1966. The final draft was was dated September 15th for filming in late September. The story of this episode originated from writer Oliver Crawford, who thought about a science fiction retelling of the 1939 film excuse me, Five Came Back, which co-starred a young Lucille Ball. Ah, oh, that's sweetheart. Several lines of dialogue in the preview did not make it into the final cut. The commissioner says, Do you know what you've done? You've concerned yourself with only seven people. You said something about a needle in a haystack. It's useless. Kirk replies, If they're not there, commissioner, then they're dead by now. Which is true. In the closing credits of the show, the title for script supervisor is misspelled Skipped Supervisor. I... How the hell do you pronounce that? S-C-P-I-P-T. I don't know. If somebody knows that, let me know. The observation deck model was designed to match up with the set with the set seen in The Conscience of the King. After this episode was filmed, no new shots of the shuttle, shuttlecraft miniature were taken. All shuttlecraft model shots used in the series were stock footage from this episode, sometimes matted into different backgrounds. That makes sense. There were a lot of shuttle shots. A still of the shuttlecraft model, facing forward inside the, hang the miniature hangar deck, appears in the end credits of this episode, with the center window of the shuttlecraft open. To make the creatures look larger than they really were, small spear and shield props were made for Buck Maffei to fling at the crew. The one that is dropped near the three men is fairly small in size, but in the next shot, it is much larger. Yeah, I caught that. I saw that, too. Hey, on the 1960s budget, you gotta work with what you got. Hua Cheng created the ape creature makeup. It was considered too grotesque to show in close-ups, but the faces of the creatures can still be seen in a few scenes. A close-up of the creature was filmed, but ended up in a deleted shot. Also, NBC broadcast standards ordered that the view of Latimer with the large spear in his back shall not be clearly seen. When Gaetano fires his phaser into the mist, there is an additional mist optical effect, which had to be added in post-production that blocks a view of the impaled officer. Yeah, that's kind of gruesome. Excuse me. Although the Galileo was destroyed in this episode, it appeared again in four later episodes. Journey to Babel... Let That Be Your Last Battlefield, Metamorphosis, and The Way to Eden. However, it wasn't until its final appearance in The Way to Eden that the full-scale ship was, repa was repainted to read Galileo 2. Kind of a mess up there. Eh, happens. Excuse me. Phyllis Douglas returned as one of the space hippies in The Way to Eden. She played the part of Yeoman Mears, which was originally written for Yeoman Rand. But, but Grace Lee Whitney had just been written out of the series. That's a shame, too. She, that's a shame. Classy lady. Even though she was drunk at the time. Classy lady. I'll, I'll move on. John Crawford, in an interview in Starlog Magazine, stated that he had a very unpleasant time in his scenes with Shatner on the bridge. 
I could see that. I don't know much about Crawford, but at the same time, I know what I've heard about Shatner. The tool that will later be the laser beacon in the Squire of Gothos is sitting above the nacelle of the shuttlecraft in an early scene. The episode marks the first appearance of the Star Trek in Star Trek of the rank of Ensign, as Ensign O'Neill is mentioned in this episode. This episode establishes that there are more than that there is more than one transporter room on the Enterprise. Kirk clearly uses the plural transporters. Transporters. In all other episodes, only the singular is used. Ferris is called Galactic High Commissioner because the name United Federation of Planets had not yet been created. Two years later, in Elon of Troyes, the term Federation High Commit Commissioner was used. Beginning with this episode, a somewhat reorchestrated version of the opening theme is played over the opening credits. The tan belts to which phasers and communicators are attached make a reappearance after being gone for several episodes. My guess they didn't have enough for they didn't have enough black belts for everybody, so they had to use what they had. At approximately the twenty minute point, as the crewman as a crewman leaves the Galileo and the doors close behind him, Look for the hand of the hidden production stagehand that can be briefly seen pushing the door closed from outside the shuttle. Which side of the door? Which side of the door? Idiot. Couldn't tell me that much. Alright. Folks, that's all I've got. Before before I proceed to, before I proceed to stop recording and upload, I want to remind everybody that the Trek Tree Contest, as I have just recently called it, is still going on. Look for the pinned post on the Prosper page. But the best, I want to see everybody's Star Trek trees. I'm going to I'm gonna upload mine here in a little bit. I want to see everybody's Star Trek trees all lit up all the, with all of the ornaments, with all your Star Trek ornaments on it. Uh, lo- get, them to, get them to me, get them to the Prosper page somehow by the 20th, and I, I'll create an album, and voting will go up until the 23rd at midnight. I will I will announce the winner on a, on the special Christmas edition of Prosper. Whew, that was, that was a that was a mouthful. Ha, <laughs> no pun intended. All right, let's knock this thing out. Empties the brain cells. You ever see question? Folks, it's been fun bringing this one to you. But it's time to set a course set a course out of this heap, head for the next planet. So you all take care, have a pleasant and excellent day. Don't do anything I would enjoy, and if you do, name it after me. Don't drink and drive because you might spill your you might spill your drink, or you might kill yourself or somebody else. And drinking and driving is highly illogical. It's as dumb as being a Sequest fan. And what's worse than that is anybody is any puke infested or is anybody rooting for that puke infested little whiner. Cry Brady, Tom, Giselle won't let me go to the Pro Bowl and I've only got three Super Bowl rings because of my kicker and Eli's beat me in my last two appearances. Manning, men slapping women, racism, animal abuse, fake friends, people who welch on bets, or anyone who is a member of, supports, or defends the Westboro Baptist Church. Things like that are highly logical and I will not make time for them. Everyone, take care. This, like I said, this one was fun. And, as always, live long and prosper. <laughs>